Welcome to the worship services of the First United Methodist Church, located at the head of Texas Street in downtown Shreveport, Louisiana. Join Senior Minister Dr. Pat Day as we worship this morning. Our scripture lesson is found in the book of Baca, which is in the Old Testament. One of the great passages of the Old Testament, chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. The Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy and inspired word. Many years ago when I was in Houston pastoring down there, we were going through a time of visioning and we could not make up our mind whether to stay where we were or to move farther out. And after a great deal of prayer and discernment, one morning about three o'clock I was awakened and I went into my study and opened my Bible and this was a passage that, I, that God led me to. Write down the revelation, make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time and it speaks to, of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it and it will certainly come and will not delay. God has a vision for every church. God has a vision or a dream for every person who follows his call and listens to his voice. Once upon a time, there was a king who was growing old, and it was time for him to give the kingdom to one of his four sons. The first left on a journey and came back from the impenetrable forest and brought back a limb from which he had carved a cane for his father. The second son went on a similar journey and came to the uncrossable river and looked down in the water, and there he saw a beautiful stone, a beautiful gem, and he returned and gave it to his dad. The third son went even farther and came to the unclimbable mountain but couldn't climb it and found a bundle of flowers at the base of it and presented these for his dad's gardens. The fourth son took exactly the same journey, but there was one major difference. When he came to the unclimbable mountain, he persevered and went to the top of the summit. And from the top, he was able to see the other side. He was able to see a beautiful, lush, green valley with streams flowing through it. And when he returned, the only thing that he could give his dad was a vision of the other side. This young man received the keys to the kingdom. No church or business or organization or nation will be any more effective or any stronger than its vision. The poorest person in the world is not the person who's down to their last penny, but the person who has no vision. Without a vision, the people perish according to the book of Proverbs. A vision is a clear, clear, precise mental picture of a preferred future. It is futuristic. It looks forward and sees what needs to happen in the future. A vision is a clear picture of what God wants us to do and be for him. Pat Williams, who is the senior vice president of the Orlando Magics, wonderful writer and motivational speaker, says this about vision. He says, men and women of vision are people who have trained themselves to look over the horizon to see what doesn't exist yet to see things others can't see. Visionary leaders see earlier than others, farther than others, and more than others. They assemble teams and followers who catch the vision and hammer those dreams into realities. Jim Collins has written a, an excellent book entitled Good to Great. And in that book, he talks about visionary companies who set big, hairy, audacious goals, BHAGs as he refers to it. This morning, I'd like to talk about a big audacious goal or vision for our church. Please open your worship bulletin, the outline of the message. This morning, please carefully listen as we share and as we listen together as the Holy Spirit whispers to our mind and our heart His vision for us at First Methodist. First of all, a big audacious vision has the power to energize and to inspire you. A vision keeps you fueled. A vision is about what could be and should be. It's amazing how it energizes and inspires you. Everybody gets tired and distracted on the journey. It's easy as a church to set lofty goals and have a God-given vision, but somewhere along the way, we begin to, like our ancient ancestors, begin to wander in the wilderness. We get off track and get off course. Sometimes whenever I get off track when I'm traveling, there's a voice that comes on and says, take an illegal U-turn. 
and go back to where you were. That's amazing how many of those voices want you to break the law, an illegal U-turn. Energy and passion and enthusiasm are the most contagious of all human emotions. As important as mission, it's a mission statement is, it will not energize the business, the church, or the organization. Only vision energizes. Only vision inspires. Dr. Albert Schweitzer, just before his death, someone asked him, how is it going with you, Dr. Schweitzer? Dr. Schweitzer says, my eyesight grows dimmer, but my vision clearer than ever. I hope that can be said about us. At this particular point in our church's great history, I hope our vision is becoming clearer for us. Energy comes from the knowledge of spe knowing specifically what we'll be doing to achieve our mission as well as where we're headed. And that's what we want to be talking about this morning. Where is this church headed? What is the next chapter? What is the 10-year vision that God is giving this church that is so exciting that you'll want to be a part of it? Annie Stanley in his superb book, Visioneering Rights, vision evokes, evokes motion. And there's no such thing as an emotionless vision. Think about your daydreams, the things that make daydreaming so enjoyable is the emotion that piggybacks on the mind's eye images. When we allow our thoughts to wander outside the walls of reality, our feelings are quick to follow. Vision is always accompanied by strong emotion. And the clearer the vision, the stronger the emotion. Without a vision, churches and organizations and businesses and individuals tend to stoop and droop and shuffle through the endless days of monotony and boredom. When there is a compelling vision, people look to the future with hope and with excitement and enthusiasm. They look forward to embracing the future, not running away from it. George Bernard Shaw once said, some people look at things as they are and say, why? Others look at how things could be and say, why not? Marcus Buckingham, who interviewed thousands and thousands of employees in the 17 years that he worked for the Gallup uh, polling people, discovered an interesting fact. He said, great leaders rally people to a better future. Great leaders rally people to a better future. The late Steve Jobs once described the passion charge vision that happened in Apple Computer in the early days. He said this, the thing that bound us together at Apple was the ability to make things that were going to change the world. That was very important to us. We were all pretty young and we all worked like maniacs and the greatest joy was that we felt we were fashioning collective works of art, much like 20th century physics. Something important that would last. Something important that would last. I can't help but believe that every person this morning in the sound of my voice wants to be a part of something that's going to last. Something that's going to make an enduring impact upon the world. That somehow, when we leave this earth, we're going to, the world's going to be a little bit better after our time here on this earth is. This, yeah, in fact, yesterday I was rocking little Adeline. And as she was in, in my lap, I looked at that baby and, and tears began to come down my cheeks. What kind of world is this baby going to grow up in? What kind of world are your children and your grandchildren and even your great-grandchildren going to grow up in? You see, I believe that, like Bill Hybels has said so many times, that the church is the greatest hope of the world. And we have a tremendous responsibility, a tremendous vision here at First United Methodist Church to over the next nine to ten years to really and truly make a major impact that will change this community for the better. And this community will not be the same because of the vision that God gives us. Robert Greenleaf once wrote, the test of greatness in a vision is that an, it has the energy to lift people out of their mobun ways to a level of being and relating from which the future can be faced with more hope than most of us can summon today. Secondly, a big audacious vision has the power to unite. It brings us together and focuses us. Every year on the 4th of July, we have about 5,000 of our closest friends run by our house. We live in South Highlands. It's on the route of the, of the firecracker race. And there, all these runners come by. In fact, it takes about 45 minutes for all of them to come by. I've just often thought, what would happen if I went out and erased those arrows the direction that they ought to go? <laughs> that when they get in front of my house... They don't know whether to go right, straight, or turn around and go back. You're talking about mass confusion. You see, a vision gives you direction. 
You can't go in a million different directions at once as a church, but God has a direction that he wants us to go in. Bill Eason wrote, vision helps leaders get people very different from the leader and one another to pull together for a common purpose. Failures to build shared vision is the biggest mistake that gifted leaders can make. I've always loved the slogan, snowflakes are one of nature's most fragile things. But just look at what they do when they stick together. A God-given vision has the capacity to bring people together by forming a team of different people, different ideas that come together and share the same vision. If God has given you a picture of what could be and should be, embrace it fully and refuse to allow the busyness and the urgency of life to distract you. That's one of the things you have to constantly be reminded of. You have to stay focused. Jesus said, a house divided will not stand. One of the concerns I have for our nation at this particular hour is we're such a divisive nation, very divided. Predators like coyotes and wolves or even lions try to separate their prey from a herd of the flock and they can easily catch and kill the isolated victim. This past weekend I was watching a history channel and it showed a, a, a winter scene with a pack of wolves chasing a herd of buffalo. And, the, and the, the game plan for the wolves was to separate or isolate just one of the buffalo out of the herd. When the buffalo were together, they were, they were totally, totally safe because they would all face outward. And any time a wolf would come up to attack them, they would, they would charge them and the, and the wolves would have to go back. But eventually, the, 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 they were able to panic the herd. And there was one young calf that got off by itself and became dinner for the, for the pack. You see, when we're together, we're stronger than we are by ourselves. It's like in just a few short weeks, the geese will be flying and that beautiful V shape that they make has an upward lift to them. In fact, a flock of geese can fly much farther than any one single goose can by itself. And so we need to remind ourselves that we're here together to move together as the body of Christ, to be unified around God's vision and to move forward with confidence and courage in the direction that he wants us to go. John Maxwell writes, vision leads the leader. It paints the target. It sparks and fuels the fire within and draws a person forward. Our vision keeps us focused on the way that we should go. It's like driving a car at night. You never see farther than your headlights, but you can make the whole trip that way. Vision keeps you focused on what you must do to succeed. Number three, a big audacious vision has the power to attract winners. Yeah, attract winners and resources to create a movement. That little voice right there is what I'm talking about this morning. What is a movement? It's a movement of God's Spirit moving a congregation in a certain way with a certain divine destiny. No church and no company and no nation can outperform its aspiration. Are you just simply a part of a local church? That's an issue on a race. Are you a part of God's movement? a part of God's Spirit, a part of what God is trying to do in this community for for Jesus Christ's sake. Legendary mountain climber Todd Skinner affirmed, we cannot lower the mountain, therefore we must elevate ourselves. We cannot lower the mountain, therefore we've got to elevate ourselves. Always adjust the mind to what's possible. Do not adjust what is possible to the mind. Great quote. Let me hit it one more time for you. Always adjust the mind to what is possible. Do not adjust what is possible to the mind. I am praying this morning that as I share this message, many of you will be stirred to say, you know, I want to be put in the game. I want to be in the game. I want to be a part of making this vision happen at First Methodist. I want to give my resources. I want to give my time. I want to give my energy. I want to give my ideas. I want to give my effort to really and truly impacting this community for Jesus Christ. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ truly will last. Big audacious visions are magnificent. They inspire people to lay down their lives for a cause that is noble and heroic, for a higher purpose. Big audacious dreams that serve a higher cause challenge people to come out of the woodwork and want to be a part of it. Nobody wants a ticket on the Titanic, but everybody wants to be a part on a team that's making a difference. 
Big audacious visions by their very nature invite and draw others to be a part of a movement. And great people and financial resources gravitate toward great ideas and great visions. You build a great church one ASK at a time, one ask at a time. Each week I invite from this pulpit many of you, all of you, to join this church and be a part of God's movement here at First Memphis. There is always an invitation to join to become involved and committed to the mission and the vision that God has given us. There's a God gap between the vision that God has on one hand and the resources and people on the other. The vision is always bigger than the resources that you have if it's of God. Because you see, God stands in the gap and makes the resources and the people possible to make the vision become a reality. Big dreams attract big people. Winners always stretch to reach the vision. Whiners shrink from the vision. We live in a world where our resources are limited only by our vision. We've been in a bad economic time for many years in our nation. And it is so easy to shrink back and say, we can't afford blank. We can't afford not to. The cost is much greater if we don't do what God asks us to do than if we step out in faith and move in the direction that He wants us to. There are resources to match any and every vision that is of God. Where God guides, He always provides. Ephesians 3.20 states, God, by the power of the work within us, is able to accomplish absolutely far more than all of us can ask or imagine. Partner with God to build the lives of others. That's what I'm asking this morning. Partner with God to get involved in what He wants for this church and this community. What I'm asking this morning is you to partner with God to be a part of this life-changing time in this church's history. There have been many people that have been working for a long time on what's called Vision 2022. Why must we vision and why must we fulfill this vision 2022? If we don't, no one else will do it. It's just that simple. There comes a time in every church's history, one of those pivotal moments, one of those crossroads, where if the church does not move forward, God's favor and blessing is withdrawn and placed upon those who will be obedient and be sensitive to what He wants. That will not be us. I will promise you that. For when he says move, we move. We don't debate it. We don't argue about it. We just do it. It's called obedience. What is it at stake? What is it at stake? The salvation of people. People's souls. People's marriages. People's hearts and their minds. Little children. That beautiful little voice I'm hearing right now, crying out. What kind of world am I going to grow up in? And it's in your hands. Vision 2022 has six key components to it. The first is leadership development. Raising up spiritual entrepreneurs. Raising up servant leaders that impact our community economically, educationally, businesses, politically, on down the list but raising up godly men and women who are leaders, who can inspire and challenge others to rise to their highest. A second part of this vision is discipleship and life transformation. The Church of Jesus Christ is in the life-changing business. Becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ means that your life is not going to be the same as it was before. And what we're going to be very intentional about doing over the next 10 years is creating and and developing Christ-like disciples that will transform this community. There's a third aspect of this vision. It's called the network of community groups. All through our, our area, all through our city and our community and our area, will be small groups that will meet at, at different times for Bible study, for prayer, for personal sharing, for developing uh, spiritual depth. But also there will be a mission component to them reaching out to the less fortunate and the broken and the hurting. There will be a fourth dimension. We are an externally focused church, but we want to be more so. We have a big, hairy, audacious goal of having a $1 million mission budget 
in nine years. That was set last year, and we're 25% of our way there right now. Not just giving money as people come through. That's transactional. But making an investment in their lives, which is transformational. Developing a relationship with them, giving them hope, giving them skills, giving them opportunities to have a job and to be productive and to, to do something worthwhile with their lives. Five. We will develop a scorecard to evaluate the effectiveness in ministry and discipleship making and missions. What we measure gets done. And number six, effective and innovative communication skills, utilizing the latest in social media and technology that can get the message that God has given us out, not only to this community and to the architects, but literally to the world. Finally this morning, a big audacious vision has the power to stretch your faith and help you persevere when the journey gets tough. Achieving a God-given vision is not easy. It is not easy. But your vision is the thing that keeps you going when you'd like to quit. The vision is the thing that keeps you focused and keeps you going when everything around you says, give up, throw in the towel, it's over, you can't make it, you're finished. When I speak to other churches and young pastors come to, to hear what I have to say, one of the number one questions is, is how do you stay at a church 20 years? I guess you could just say you just refuse to leave. I don't know if that, that's, not, that's not really the answer, but. Uh, now I've asked that, been asked that question so many times, and it's very simple. When I came here, God gave me a vision. And that vision gets clearer every year I'm here. And that vision will not let me quit. Just like the beautiful passage that, that Lisa read a moment ago about Paul. Paul was going through this difficult time and, and he stood before this King Agrippa and he said to him, King Agrippa, I have not been disobedient to that heavenly vision. I have not been disobedient to it. I have not turned my back on what God has called me to be and to do. Every one of the great leaders that I've ever studied from Washington to Lincoln to Churchill to Disney to Steve Jobs has experienced discouraging failures and setbacks. And because these leaders could see what others could not see, they refused to let any opponent or any obstacle stand in their way. The vision kept them focused and the vision kept them fueled. Stay focused, stay fueled, and you can finish strong. The vision has an incredible power to stretch your faith. Stretch your faith. If you're not satisfied with where your faith is right now, get involved in this church. Become a part of the team. Become a part of what's going to happen in the next 10 years. And I will guarantee at the end of that 10 years, you will not know your life. It will be so different. And your faith will be much stronger and more vibrant and more real. Faith is like a muscle. The more that's used and stretched, the stronger it becomes. Our thinking must be stretched so that we can begin to think in ways that is creative and innovative and new. With vision, far more will be expected and will be accomplished. A vision sets a high standard of goals and expectations. When President John F. Kennedy's granddad lived in Ireland, there were high uh, rock walls that they would go back, coming back from school every day. And all the older boys would always challenge him to, to climb over, but he was afraid of heights and he was terrified. And one day this bully grabbed his cap and threw it over this high wall. Mr. Kennedy knew that that moment he had to make a decision. If he didn't go get it, he was going to be severely punished when he got home. So he mustered up his courage and went over the wall to get his cap. One of the greatest leadership principles I've ever learned from that story is many times you've got to throw your cap over the wall. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to have that courage to take the risk to really and truly reach out for what God is calling you for because you cannot remain where you are if you want to be what God wants you to be. It involves change. It involves getting out of your comfort zone. Some people are never happy. They're always, always searching for the elusive dream. Dreamers do a lot of talking but not much doing, but a person with a God-given vision talks little but does much. Real happiness is found in dreaming a dream, envisioning a vision that is bigger than you are, finding something or someone you can lose your life in. Life is more than just watching soap operas or CNN every afternoon when you get home from, from work. 
or killing time waiting for retirement or just settling for average. When you come to the end of your life, you can truly say, I am satisfied. I am proud of what my life has become and the achievements that through the grace of God I've been able to make. Someone has said average is the worst of the best and the best of the worst. Maybe this morning you've lost your vision. Maybe this morning you, you say, you know, I'm not really important. Everybody at this church is important. Everybody here in the sound of my voice has a role to play, has a place on the team. But if you don't do it and I don't do it, nobody else will. There are very few times in a person's life that you have an opportunity like you do this morning. An opportunity that is God-given. An opportunity that is truly from the heart of God that challenges and stretches each one of us to the limit. May we be obedient to the vision that God has given us. May we, like Paul said, I was not disobedient to that heavenly vision. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as we're about to move into Holy Communion, I just ask you, Lord, to be with us this morning. And may the vision that you have for us, may it begin to germinate and begin to grow in the heart and the mind of every person here. For we pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. You've been watching the worship services of the First United Methodist Church, located at the head of Texas Street in downtown Shreveport, Louisiana. We welcome you to join us in person next Sunday at 8.30 or 11 a.m. For more information about First United Methodist Church of Shreveport, please visit our website at www.fumcshreveport.org.